Hey, this is Kevin Rail for Pine Pollen Superfoods. Now today we're going to talk about something that I hold very dear to my heart called fasting. Now in the big picture, fasting is starting to sweep the nation by storm, so to speak. Although it's been around for hundreds of thousands of years, it's just starting to gain a lot of momentum now. So it's really important for you to know a little bit of the benefits of fasting and why you'd want to do it. So before we even get there, just understand that there are several different theologies when it comes to fasting. You have extended fasts, you have prolonged fasts, you have this thing called time-restricted feeding, you have juice fasts, you have dry fasts. Well, I'm going to spend pretty much the most of our time today talking about time-restricted feeding. So what that is, is if you heard that buzzword before, it means you're eating in a time-restricted window throughout the course of the day. For example, a lot of people do a 16 to 8 ratio. So what they do is they'll fast for 16 hours and they'll eat in an 8-hour window. For example, it would be like eating between 9 and 5 or eating between say 10 and six, or even 12 and eight, some people do that. Um, the key thing you wanna do though, is you wanna try to stop eating by seven o'clock at night. That is when all the, the benefits really start to kick in of time-restricted feeding. Because after seven o'clock, your pancreas kinda goes into a sleep mode, so to speak, and your body becomes favorable for diabetes. And I know that sounds crazy and it may sound scary, but in the big picture, your body basically goes into a diabetic state after seven o'clock at night. So it is in your best interest to cut your window down by seven o'clock every single day. Now, in order to get the benefits, you gotta do time-restricted feeding for a minimum of five days a week. I do it every single day, and I'm not saying you have to do it every single day of the week, but a minimum of five days a week is gonna get you the benefits of it. Now, you wanna know what the benefits are, I know. So, one of the main benefits, obviously, is if you're eating in a smaller window of time throughout the course of day, you're going to consume less calories. Yes, you can go and to Jack in the Box or any kind of fast food chain and just like eat a mega dose of calories throughout that eight hour period. But honestly, if you eat a huge meal sometime in that eight hour time frame, such as that like junk food, you're gonna get so full you're not gonna wanna eat anymore. And if you're strict with your time restricted window and you cut it at seven o'clock or even six o'clock, you're gonna be able to do yourself a justice by only getting that one meal and you're still only gonna get say 2000 calories. I do not condone that by any stretch of the imagination. I always suggest that you eat a balanced diet and try to get as many whole foods and clean foods as you possibly can into that eight hour window. And usually if you pace it right, you can get two good solid meals and maybe one more meal in there somewhere else. So if you do that direction and you're only eating in a small window, less calories equal more weight loss. So if weight loss is your initiative, that's going to be beneficial for you. Also, when you're eating in a small window at time, say you, you start eating at like 10 o'clock in the morning, most people think that they have to eat first thing in the morning to have energy and have juice and all this stuff. But what actually happens is if you get up in the morning after you're sleeping for say seven to eight hours, your body is naturally energized. And at approximately four to 4.30 in the morning, you get this spike of growth hormone, testosterone, and adrenaline, which gives your body a natural boost of energy. So when you wake up, you have that, you already slept, your body is rested, so there's no need to eat anything for energy. That's kind of a myth in the big picture. My suggestion is you just drink some water upon getting up out of bed, then go about your business. Then when you eat your first meal later in the morning, you're not gonna have this big bump and spike of your blood sugar levels. Because if you eat something like even a whole grain bagel or, or a whole grain Oprah and muffin or something that you think is healthy for you, oatmeal, anything like that, you're, it might be low glycemic, it might be high in fiber, but you're still gonna get a predominant high influx of carbohydrates and your blood sugar is going to elevate. When it drops back down later in the morning, that's when you get in the problems of losing energy and losing focus. And then your brain kind of goes downhill and then you're like, I need something. And then people grab a snack or something, they lift themselves back up. Then that cycle keeps on going up and down. So if you don't eat at all and you just drink some water and stay hydrated, your, your energy levels are actually gonna stay maintained or slightly higher and your brain function is gonna benefit big time from that. Because with a spike in blood sugar comes a drop in blood sugar. And when that, that drop occurs, your brain function goes down as well. So if you can maintain your energy level, your brain function is gonna go up as well through the medium of time-restricted feeding and fasting. Also, one of the big things that I love about time-restricted feeding and fasting itself is you don't have to stress so much about food. A lot of people fall off the wagon when they're doing a diet plan because they have to plan all the time and they have to think all the time. They're like going out to a restaurant, what do I eat, what do I eat? If you say, I'm eating between 10 o'clock and five o'clock, it, it kind of takes away the stress of what am I gonna have for breakfast, what am I gonna have later in the night? You just kind of go through the motions. If you're doing a longer fast, 20 or 24 hours, and you're just gonna eat one meal in the day, all you gotta think about is that one meal. 
So an adverse effect of that is you get a lot more accomplished when you're fasting because you don't have to finagle the food, you don't have to prepare as much food, you don't have to think about it, you don't have to drive anywhere. And then you can focus on other things that are more important, such as your job, your relationships, your friendships, and everything else in between. So those are some of the benefits of fasting and time-restricted feeding, and I encourage you to give it a spin if you haven't before. In the meantime, if you have any more questions or comments, hit me up. I'm Kevin Rail, and I'm here for Pine Pollen Superfoods. Till next time.